According to a Newsweek poll, when asked if voters would vote for an atheist, 62% said they wouldn't. Only 29% said they would. A lot of discussion has been made regarding the results of this poll, but what does it really mean? Really, the only thing you can conclude is that people won't vote for an atheist if that is the only issue. The poll didn't present anything else other than religion. It didn't present any specific position on foreign or domestic policy or the economy or civil liberties. Since atheism was the only thing specifically mentioned, it was the only real criteria the respondents could use to judge the hypothetical candidate. But what if the question had been, Would you vote for a divorced B-movie actor? Or, Would you vote for a drug-using womanizer? Or, would you vote for an alcohol drinker with a criminal record? You see, if you focus on one particular aspect, you can get whatever result you want, even though the voters may end up going a completely different way. But there's something else to consider, too. When the same Newsweek poll asked, Do you believe in God? 6% of respondents said no. But when asked, Would you describe yourself as an atheist? Only 3% said yes, half as many. That means that the other 3% essentially said, I don't believe in God, but I'm not an atheist. Huh? Psychologically speaking, people are reluctant to associate themselves with labels. So someone may very well not believe in God, but not consider himself an atheist. We see this effect with other labels too. In 2006, a Zogby poll commissioned by the Cato Institute asked of half its respondents, would you describe yourself as physically conservative and socially liberal? 59% said they would. They asked the other half, would you describe yourself as physically conservative and socially liberal, also known as libertarian? The yes responses dropped to 44%. The only difference between the two was the political label. Once again, the respondents just didn't want to be associated with a label. We're only scratching the surface of the problems involved in taking accurate polls. Again, a comprehensive survey can use psychological tricks and other methods to ensure greater accuracy, but this is an expense that the news outlets just don't want to cover. It isn't just about the poll being a snapshot in time. It isn't just about margin of error or confidence rates. It's a fundamental problem with polls. Every single one. Unless they go through the scientific rigor to eliminate these problems, they're completely bogus. In a study of polls surrounding the California governor recall of 2003, 20 polls within the same two-month period were examined and compared for their accuracy. With a 95% confidence rating, only one of them should have gotten results outside its margin of error. Instead, there was only one of the 20 polls that was accurate. Some pollsters say that you have to look at meta-polls, combining the results of several polls together to get more accurate results. But when these 20 polls were averaged together, for most questions, the results were in line with making random guesses and the results of the victor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was underestimated by 15 percentage points. They also found a large disparity based on which organization did the polling. Knight Ritter and the Los Angeles Times did the best job with 60% accuracy, which in school is just barely squeaking by with a passing grade. But Gallup, widely respected as a polling organization, was only 10% accurate. The study's authors concluded three things. One, there is no objective way to verify the accuracy of most polls. Two, whether it's due to political bias or flawed methodology, polls often drastically misinform the public. Three, when pollsters combine the result of one question with another, all the pollster may be doing in reality is compounding errors and giving false information to the media and to the public. Polls are bad enough without any deliberate manipulation. Scientists have long discovered that mistakes and unconscious biases can creep into results. That's the whole reason for double-blind tests. 
And again, scientific surveys try their best to eliminate it. Most polls don't. Here's one example. Zenny Abraham is an economics advisor and a producer of business simulations of sports organizations for classroom use. USA Today and Gallup poll have produced polls on the United States presidential race that are rigged. How is it that Senator Barack Obama can outraise all the challengers, including Senator Clinton, but at the same time, at the same time, consistently be, be outpolled by Senator Clinton with no change? There was a change. Early in June, specifically June 5th, USA Today Gallup poll reported a tie between Senator Clinton and Senator Obama. However, Frank Newport, the designated Gallup guru of USA Today, had the poll redone only seven days later. That's completely out of character in terms of timing for the polling for the USA Today Gallup relationship. His explanation is that they couldn't believe that there were people out there in their sample that would select Senator Obama over Senator Clinton given all the past polling. In other words, he basically said, in, he said right, this, right here in the text that we have a new poll in the field with a different sample size. In other words, we're looking for people that are going to actually say, hey, we select Senator Clinton over Senator Obama. That's rigging, folks. That's rigging. Yet that poll is taken by CNN and other news cable outlets on television and reported and it's repeated by people like yourself as gospel. So you think Senator Clinton is ahead when in point of fact, we have no freaking idea really what's going on.